Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Uh, a while back I bought this uh, brand new chuck for my uh, lathe. Uh, this has reversible top jaws and one of the advantages with uh, this is that uh, you can remove the top jaws and replace them with uh, soft jaws. Uh, if you follow the other machinists here on uh, YouTube you might have seen Keith Fenner doing this in the Matrax project and uh, Tom Lipton does it in the uh, Wobble Drive project. As you can see the top jaw is held in place with the two the screws here, so uh, if I remove these I can remove the top jaw and this, uh, gonna get the screws out of here, uh, this can of course be put like this or you can reverse it and use it like this or you can just make your own uh, soft top jaws and turn them and by turning them you get them to exactly the measurements you like and you can turn them to irregular shapes if you prefer and uh, this is what the top jaw looks like and to make uh, soft jaws that fit we're going to have to make it somehow like this and also a big groove here and then make some holes and uh, countersink them I'm going to need one of these uh, bottom jaws to uh, uh, serve as a measuring device while uh, making the top jaws so I'm moving the scroll all the way out until this comes loose. Oh. I went to the uh, scrapyard to find some uh, material for these uh, soft jaws and uh, I found uh, this kind of bar. This is uh, 28 by 50 millimeter steel and I also found this which is 40 by 80 millimeter steel bar and I have one piece already clamped up here in these two vices so I'm going to start milling. When I was milling I used this uh, Eagle 66 oil can and the reason is I found this guy here on YouTube his name is Adam Booth and he always turns out excellent work and at first I ha thought he had some kind of skill or knowledge or something but then I realized that the reason his work turns out so nice is that he uses the right type of oil can obviously so I bought the same kind and now I'm pretty sure everything I do will turn out just as great. And now I'm going to remove the chips here with my magic wand here. I used this uh, roughing end mill to uh, make the 12 millimeter groove and now I'm going to use this uh, 12 millimeter regular end mill uh, to uh, widen the groove to 12.7 millimeters and uh, giving it a bit smoother finish. I milled uh, the first two bars and uh, uh, when doing that I realized that uh, I will have to mill the top side of them also and uh, you'll see why uh, later but uh, now I'm going to put them back in the vise and I'm going to uh, mill uh, the other side of them flat and parallel with uh, the base.
as you can see here this uh, bar of the stock wasn't very straight to begin with so I'm going to take another pass across it. Of course I'm going to mill these uh, smaller jaws uh, just the same way as I milled uh, the big ones. I just have to put some parallels in the vise here and then clamp this. And now, after cutting this uh, into three pieces, uh, I'm going to make uh, the ends flat and square uh, by milling them. And to do that, I've uh, set up the abena for uh, horizontal milling and I put the vise uh, in the lengthwise position. So let's start milling. I'm going to use a carbide insert end mill when uh, doing this. Uh, I bought uh, these a while back, different sizes, 16, 20, 25 and uh, 32 millimeter, and uh, I often prefer these to uh, regular end mills. I'm really getting close now and my last pass will be 0.45mm and then uh, the dog should fit perfectly.
it's a perfect fit. For those of you who are curious about RPMs and such, uh, I'm using this 25mm carbide insert end mill. I'm spinning it at 2000 RPMs and uh, that gives me a cutting speed of 157 meters per minute. Since it has four inserts uh, and I'm spinning it at 2000 RPMs, I'm taking 8000 cuts a minute. And uh, with the table feed rate of 210 millimeters per minute, uh, that gives me a table feed of 0.025 millimeters uh, per cut. Uh, that might look a little bit wild, but uh, it's still within the limits of uh, what the carbide insert uh, can handle. The jaws uh, come together like this in the chuck and as you can see it will be difficult to uh, turn small objects. So I'm going to mill away some material uh, like this uh, and make this here a uh, 120 degree angle.
since this corner here, which goes down here, is totally sharp, uh, I'm going to remove some material right in here with a hacksaw. I'm going to drill the holes with this uh, 13 millimeter uh, Morse Taper 1 drill. That goes into the 40 taper adapter, like so. Since I still haven't uh, got my uh, DRO set up, I'm going to use these uh, gauge blocks uh, to uh, set the drill right. I'm going to drill at 365 RPMs, so I set this at 112 here. That is one, one and two on the back. And since I'm feeding vertically, uh, I will look at the red ring and uh, I've set uh, the table feed at uh, 26 millimeters per minute and that will give me a vertical feed of uh, 0 0.07 millimeters per revolution. I realize the feed is a bit low, so the chips get uh, a bit thin. I'm going to increase the feed here to 37 millimeters per minute, and that'll give me a feed of uh, 0 0.10 millimeters per revolution. Here I'm using a clever material stop that uh, I got when I bought the mill, and I've set this up so that to drill the hole on the other side, I just slide it in until the dog touches here, and then I clamp it and I'm set to go. I drilled all the holes now, and uh, what I have left to do is uh, to countersink uh, the holes from this end so that uh, I can get the screw head out of the way when I'm uh, using the chuck jaws. And I'm going to use uh, one of these countersinks, the M12 one, to do this. I'm going to countersink in this uh, Alboga uh, machine and uh, these are pretty common in Sweden. They're available in a couple of different versions. This is the mill drill version that has a cast base and an integrated uh, XY table. And uh, they're also available in a drill press version that just has a column all the way to the floor so you can put big things underneath here. And uh, you can also get a lot of other different versions where they all use uh, the same head but are set up a little bit differently. This is the mill drill version and uh, it uh, has a Morse taper spindle. Uh, but what's uh, a bit odd with this one is that it comes with a special ER32 adapter. And this has a Morse taper 3 of course, but then it has this big nut here uh, that is screwed onto these threads and this locks the Morse taper uh, firmly into place, so it can't uh, come loose when you're milling, which is otherwise a big risk with uh, Morse taper milling machines.
I want to countersink this hole 32 millimeters, and uh, this machine does have uh, a quill stop, so I'm bringing the, this down to where it would start cutting, and then I have then I set the quill stop here to 32 millimeters. And then I'm ready to go. Now I've done the countersinking and uh, I'm going to stamp a number in them. So uh, I number them one, two and three uh, to make sure I always put them into the same uh, bottom jaw. And here I have a set of soft jaws in the chuck, ready to be turned and used. To be able to conveniently turn the soft jaws under load, I've made these different size spiders that are of course just nuts with three drilled and tapped holes with long screws in them. I found a good discussion thread about soft jaws on a forum on the web and it does discusses the use of these spiders and some other things and I'll post a link to that discussion in the description of the video. Uh, here on YouTube there's also a couple of uh, videos where soft jaws are used. And one is uh, by Keith Fenner in the Matrix project. Uh, there's another one where uh, Tom Lipton uses uh, round aluminium soft jaws uh, in his Wobble Drive project. And uh, there is one uh, with the CNC machines and uh, soft jaws that's published by Haas. And uh, I'll put some links to uh, those uh, videos in the description of my own video. I hope to be back with uh, some more projects soon. Uh, until then, bye bye.